Good, e good afternoon, I guess. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm really glad some of you decided to stick around. And <clears throat> good. Uh, yeah, I want to close out this, this great conference. Uh, we're going to be talking about some Ruby core stuff. And show of hands, how many of you were at Ruby Kaigi last year? Five. <laughs> So this talk is, if you, maybe you saw the video, but if you haven't watched it, this is like part two. This is, uh, last year I talked about what, what you can do to get started in open source and easy ways to contribute. And so this talk is, once you have something you want to actually contribute, what, what can you do? How can you work with Ruby Core? So that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Zach, or ZZach, and I've been on the team since 2012. And I want to share with you some of my experiences and some of the things that have been going on. And hopefully, it explains some things for you and helps you get more involved with what we're doing. Our agenda today is focused on three topics. And first one is to stay dry, which I don't know if that's going to happen. But then we're going to talk about working together, how Ruby Core works, and how you can help us and, and join and stuff. Uh, the next thing is feature development. So some of the recent features we've worked on and how we go about planning these things. Then I'm going to talk about security and how that affects Ruby and how, how you can help out. And lastly, we're going to have some beer, hopefully. Before we get into all that, uh, I just want to share with you a little bit about myself. Some recent news. I moved across the country, so I'm from America, I moved across the country to San Francisco, and it was from my original hometown in Vermont, and I drove across the entire country because of this guy right here. See, he's, he's a little big for airplanes, so I had to rent a car and do this. Uh, but he was super helpful, he helped me drive, he even used the litter box in the car. Uh, he helped me pump gas and loved this spot, like right in my rear view mirror, so I couldn't see any of the cars behind me. Uh, but, whoa. Sorry, yeah, we made it, and we made it to California. It's beautiful there. Ginger loves his new home, and I can't wait to be back with him uh, in a few days. So I haven't actually been home in a month and a half, and I've been doing this like conference tour starting in India and flying like literally around the rest of the world to Philippines, spent some time in Japan, and now I'm here. But after, after all this traveling, I've come to realize that no matter where you go, what, whatever conference you're at in Ruby, um, whether it's South Africa or Australia or here, every, every one of these countries has a major Ruby conference. But <laughs> Like, regardless of what the actual name is, everyone just calls it RubyConf. So it's very confusing. Uh, but it's, it's, it's great to be at this one and finish off my little tour and share with you all my experiences, and especially to be a part of RubyCon for the win. I'm really, I'm, I'm really glad to be here and speak. It's my first trip to Thailand, and uh, I, I hope you forgive me. I don't know geography very well, but... I spent a lot of time planning this trip and trying to uh, find out, you know, what things to do here and searching on the internet. I found these three things and I wasn't, I wasn't sure, like, I tried some of them and it just doesn't seem right, like, I want, I want to see the real, I want to see the real, the real deal, you know, I want to know what this place is actually about. And in my search, I found, I realized that Thailand is very convenient. <laughs> it has, it's so convenient that it has the highest density of convenience stores. And I quote, literally I read this on the internet, so it must be true. Sometimes there's even two 7-Elevens standing right across from each other. And you can find it anywhere, even on top of a mountain. <laughs> so convenient. <laughs> I also, I also learned that this place has a rivalry, a very intense rivalry with Belgium. 
I have no idea why, but every, every site I went to literally referenced that this country is bigger than Belgium. <laughs> but the best part is the actual party we had last night was at like a Belgian bar. <laughs> so I don't know how strongly they actually care about this rivalry thing. But it seems, seems bad. I also noticed that there's a lot of motorcycles here and they're very loud and there's so many, like everyone owns a bike, which is, which is funny because I'm also in a bike gang. <laughs> this is, this is uh, RubyConf India and Goa with, with Charlie and a few of my friends. We, we're kind of a big deal there. I can't wait to go back. But anyways, enough joking around. Let's get to the real point why we're here. And the first thing I want to talk about is working together, how we, how we do this. And to put things into perspective, I want to talk about some of my current work. And in the, since joining Ruby Core, I'm number one committer all time in total patches. I also want to note that two of these people on this list are paid full time to work on Ruby, and I'm only part time. And no, the other person is a bot, so that doesn't count. Literally, we have a bot that commits once a day to change the date time on the version.h file. And yeah, so they have 365 patches a year. I can't, I can't honestly take all the credit. Um, about a quarter of all of my commits are patches that other people have contributed or I've worked on with other people and got them involved in Ruby Core. I'm very proud of that. And I've worked hard on, on this and we've added two new con committers since, since then and one of them is Terrence who you've all met earlier today, hopefully. If you haven't, you should give him a big hug. And the other person is Eric Wong, who I have no idea what he actually looks like, but he is the maintainer of Unicorn, which is a fairly important Ruby web server you've probably used once or twice. But I've been working very hard on bridging this gap and getting new, new contributors involved in the team, and, and this is what I've been focusing on, even going as far as traveling you know, around the world and telling people like, how to do this stuff, how it works. But many people are concerned about the language barrier. Um, most of the committers are in Japan. They speak Japanese fluently. And I've been doing my best to learn Japanese, but it takes time. And I've not even been learning for a year. And I just get so burnt out on it. But I have a secret, and it's been helping me quite a lot. So whenever I'm most needed to speak Japanese, I just follow this pattern, and, and by this graph, you can tell that the amount of beer that I drink dramatically increases the amount of Japanese I know. <laughs> True fact. But I'm trying to get better, and I know no one's perfect. Uh, it's like, I, was just, I just came back from Japan, and one, one of the days I was working in this cafe, and I was, I was hacking with some friends, and I was like, oh, man, I really need to go to the bathroom. So, <laughs> so I was like, oh, I think the toilets are over here. And so I went, and I went, I went into the, the area, and I was like, oh, there's, there's a sign over the door, but it's in Japanese. So I was like, oh, okay, there's another door. I can't read any of this kanji. It's, like, really advanced. And I was like, there's another, another bathroom, but it's the woman's bathroom. They don't have a sign. Like, I'm not going to go poop in the girl's bathroom. Like, give me a break. So I just went in there. I took a crap. And literally, I went to flush the toilet, and it didn't work. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so I just got out of there and just left, left them to leave, like, my mess. It was terrible. I didn't even know what to say. How do I even, like, explain that? Like, sorry I crapped, and it didn't work. Like, I don't even know how to say that in Japanese. Uh, go men Sorry, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> They'll be like, what is, what is wrong with this guy? Oh, unko, unko. <laughs> Luckily, though, we have, on, on the Ruby Core, we have a diverse team of members from all over the world. And they're super patient people, very helpful, and with extensive knowledge of, com of computers. So anything, basically, you need to know. A lot of our development is based around events. I think Koichi probably mentioned this in his talk. Uh, we like to schedule developer meetings, and 
do future proposals during these events and talk about things that affect, affect the team and affect our users and how we can make Ruby better. And we like to get everyone together. And if you really want to get involved, my best advice to you is come to Ruby Kaigi. <laughs> so we like to do this thing, Ruby committers versus the world. And it's like a live Q&A session with the whole team that's there, present. And if you're not, it's unforgivable. And we ask, you know, anyone in the crowd can ask a question of the team, and you can get feedback. And you can ask Matt stuff about Rails, and he'll divert it to someone else, most likely. But this next section, let's talk about feature development. How how we actually, once we make some decisions, how we how we do this stuff. And I'm going to show you some examples of some of the recent features we've added to Ruby. And first one is some new syntax additions and some literals we've added. And so Ken, Kenta Murata-san wanted to implement a new literal for rational numbers. And his original implementation looked something like this, where there's like the double, double slashes, and that creates a rational number or a fraction. Um, but after we discussed this feature for a while on the list, we resolved to the R suffix, or number. And as a bonus, Matt's gave us the I suffix for, for complex numbers. So thanks, Matt's. And Murata-san committed this patch. And you can use this today in 2.1 if you upgrade. So this is a very drastic improvement. You should upgrade immediately. Uh, seriously, the next, the next, this next one's even more dramatically improving the language, and that's frozen strings. And another, it's another syntax-related improvement, but it affects the virtual machine and increases uh, performance of Ruby. So typically, when you want to use frozen strings, uh, in this case, rack um, saves these method override parameters in a constant. So they actually have to take the string and you know, extract it into some constant instead of just passing it around. And yeah, this, this reduces request overhead for a rack. But with actual frozen strings, we don't need to do all this extra work. We can just freeze it once. And any time it's used in the future, it's already interned. So Char Charlie Somerville, who works at GitHub, started this conversation. And what we what we came up with was the f suffix. And it does basically exactly what we want, but it's not, it's not quite perfect. And I don't, I don't really like this syntax. Um, the string f, or as I like to call it, string f. Fuck. <laughs> but thankfully, Charlie Nutter, who is like the feature god, coming up with all these great ideas from Java land. It's like, no, we should just do this in the VM. Should just, we should just get this automatically. Why do we even have this method if we're not going to use it properly? So Nobu reverted Charlie's patch. And the implementation we have today is no suffix, just the regular string freeze method. And it works automatically. And you get this in Ruby 2.1 if you upgrade. The uh, last feature that I'm really happy to, to present is symbol garbage collection. And this, this won't be out yet, but it's already been committed and was proposed by Naruhiro Nakamura-san. And so before, before this, this patch was in place, uh, yeah, symbols weren't garbage collected, so they stuck around for the entire lifetime of your program. So in this, in this example, you can see that, yeah, like 10,000 symbols are still in memory. And that can drastically like, increase the memory growth of your application and cause other problems. Um, but with this patch, we now have symbol GC. And instead, this example emits only 2,800 symbols. This, this can make a huge difference on applications and can help uh, mitigate the hash DOS vulnerability that has existed for so long. Uh, this will be available in Ruby 2.2, and you'll be able to use this by Christmas, hopefully. 
the last, last section, we're almost there, is security. And leads, it really does lead us into this final section. Um, but I know it's a very touchy subject, and we have OpenSSL in Ruby, and this is, this is where this discussion took place. So it literally, open secure socket layer has secure in the name. You would hope to God that it would just work, but yeah, maybe we should rename it to close, close SSL. So a few months back, we got this patch, and someone reported, you know, we had, we had some insecure defaults in OpenSSL, basically allowing people to use unsecure ciphers in their, in their programs. And we talked about this forever, but we couldn't come up with a good solution, and all we had was hacks. Hacks and hacks. And what this patch was the first one we received, uh, just basically deletes all of the potentially harmful ciphers and only supports the, you know, the, the, the rest of them. The problem is, if any future ciphers come out that aren't supported or are vulnerable, then we, we can't do anything about that. And so we took a whitelisting approach, which is a little better. And this patch, if you kind of look here in the ellipses, is where all the ciphers are whitelisted. So it just creates a list and then sends that off to OpenSSL. But the problem with this is, what about ciphers we don't approve of? Or why do we need to maintain this list? So Martin, the maintainer of OpenSSL, came up with this great idea. We should, we should actually take these ciphers that we have and we should go upstream. We should go to OpenSSL and try to convince them to actually in implement these defaults, these sane defaults, into OpenSSL. Um, because it's more than just Ruby that's actually affected by this problem. It affects any implementation of OpenSSL, be it like in JavaScript or Python or any, anything that inherits these ciphers. They all have to ha hack this workaround in order to get past this thing. And this, another downside of this is we have semantic versioning now, and if we commit something like this, it will potentially break applications that depend on these old ciphers. And the worst part about this whole thing is that OpenSSL is just a library, like literally has nothing to do with Ruby itself, just other than that it's included in the language and it's used in other major libraries that people are using every day. I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a great point, but like the language itself doesn't want to focus on these things. And we should be more concerned about protecting, these, protecting our users and doing everything we can to promote good citizenship. And I came up with, I came up with this idea to, to, to warn people if one of these ciphers is being used, instead of just raising the seg fault, which is what currently happens, you know, don't break their application, just warn them, and hopefully they pay attention to this thing and can fix it before we just dramatically remove these ciphers and break people's applications in, you know, a minor version bump. So where, where do we go next? I really, I really want us to focus on making Ruby better and easier for everyone, and including people who don't even know how to install Ruby, or people who want to write their applications and just be happy with it, and don't need to be security experts just to get things done. But I understand this is going to be a lot of work, and we need to, we need to do this together. I know I'm starting to feel like the burnout of all this, these conferences really make, make it worth it and make me feel better about this whole thing. And I know no one's perfect and we all make mistakes from time to time, but we should focus on correcting ourselves and growing to be better people. So that's really all the time I have. And thank you so much for having me and let's continue to work hard to make Ruby better. And if you have any questions, I'll take them. If you're shy, you can just ask me on Twitter. That's fine as well. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, again, it's thanks to Mr. Zachary. Thanks. Thanks so much, Thailand.